Rebecca. Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca. Now, as you can see, I have a weird copy of this. I could not find it anywhere. I finally found this copy at Saturday Matinee, and I picked it up because I wanted the movie. Let's just get that inside. This is my favorite Hitchcock movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I think it is gorgeous. It's not really an outright horror film. It's more of a suspense and a psychological, maybe not thriller, but drama. Uh, stars Laurence Olivier and Joan Fontaine. And I just, the opening sequence where the camera is panning down the drive to Mandalay, the house that they lived in, the giant mansion that they lived in, and Joan Fontaine is narrating over it is gorgeous. I don't know why, but that scene stays with me so much. The scene with Joan Fontaine, Miss, Mrs. DeWinter, she doesn't get a first name, and Mrs. Danvers in Rebecca's bedroom. That scene is really creepy. <laughs> Mrs. Danvers is like scary in that scene and poor Joan Fontaine. You just can't help but feel for this poor woman throughout the movie. She's so alone. She kind of jumped into this situation that she was not at all prepared for. And it's just, it's a great movie. Very, very atmospheric. And a couple of twists in it that I was not expecting. John Carpenter's Halloween a classic. Out of Jason, Freddy, and Michael Myers, Michael Myers is definitely my favorite. He's the scariest to me because he just feels so, like, big and unstoppable. So unstoppable. Like, Jason gets a little ridiculous for me. And Freddy's kind of short, kind of small, and he talks too much. And... But Michael Myers is just this blank, unstoppable, evil force. And of course, this is Jamie Lee Curtis's first starring role. She does a great job in it. Basically, a bunch of babysitters getting stalked on Halloween night. Very, very effective. This movie never really scared me, but I just love the way it's done. And you can't tell me that this music is not gorgeous. Seriously, how great was that music? Hocus Pocus, the lightest movie on my list. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Najimi, Najimi, I have no idea how to say her name, I'm sorry. But she's been in a ton of other things. Oh, and a very young Thora Birch. And Sean Murray, for NCIS fans out there. This is a classic. Everything about this movie is so much fun. Just from, you know, the look of it to the interactions between these three, which is really the heart of it, even though they're the villains. And when they start singing, I put a spell on you. Mm, that's great. It's just not Halloween without Hocus Pocus. Creep show. This movie means a lot to me because this is the first DVD I ever bought. I believe I was about 11 when I bought it. And this movie is fun. Like, sometimes it's a little scary, but mostly it's just fun. It's a collection of five short stories. And the cool thing is you can watch all five of them and, you know, pick a favorite. And sometimes, like when I was little, I liked some better than others, but as I got older I grew to appreciate the ones that I wasn't crazy about in the first place. I think there's something to enjoy about every segment in this. And this is based off of a Stephen King book, and I believe he wrote the screenplay as well. And directed by George A. Romero, the king of zombies. And Stephen King stars in the second segment, the... Lonesome Death of Jordi Vera, I believe it's officially titled. 
which is that segment is funny and sad and it's actually kind of poignant in a weird way The Innocence starring Deborah Kerr and some other people this is about a woman who goes to this house to work as a governess for two children, Miles and Flora. Ah! Oh, that's crappy inside. And eventually she starts seeing ghosts. And the great thing about this movie is by the end, there are a few different conclusions you can make. One, she was crazy because she is kind of unbalanced. There's a lot of sexual frustration going on in her and some inappropriateness between her and Miles, the young boy. And there's that, or there really are ghosts, and the children really are what she thinks they are. Or it's a little bit of both, and I tend to lean towards it's a little bit of both. I think there were ghosts, but she was definitely messed up. I really love this movie. I think this is terribly underrated because I never hear anything about it. I, I forget actually how I heard about this. Uh, I heard about it because it gets compared to the original Haunting a lot and I actually think this is much scarier. Like it wasn't scary when I watched it but later it stayed with me you know and it it definitely made me you know be a bit more alert in the dark. And there is this song in it sung by it's either Isla or Isla. Isla Cameron, who is an adult, but she's singing in a child's voice, and that song is haunting. And it's not a very long song, but I'm still not going to play the whole thing, just a little bit of it. Singing over and over by the tree that weeps with me. Singing over and over till my lover returns to me. This is based on a Henry James story called The Turning of the Screw, which I have not read, but I do kind of want to get my hands on. So that is all I have to say. Those are the top ten movies I like to watch at Halloween. Some scary, some not so much. Some old, some new. Some monster, some ghost. So I hope you all have a good October, and if you enjoy Halloween, I hope you have a very happy Halloween. Goodbye.